you guys through with Because Jitsu here again um, to go over an addendum to our mount video that we did just the other day. If you haven't seen it, go check out our mount video, how to dominate from the mount. It just goes over different positions within the mount, how to go from one to the next, what the best one is, how to maintain it when you get there. It's good stuff. But we're going to go over today, once we've got to our high mount where we've got our knees pinched, we've got our stirrups in, we're posturing up and ready to attack, what are our options from there? We have a whole bunch of options. Like, like I said in the previous video, this is where I like to play from. This is where a lot of my paths end up in the end, is in high mount. And I've been playing with it for quite a long time and sort of accumulated a nice uh, roster of attacks from there. And we're gonna go over a bunch of them. So we will start with my partner here in mount. All right, so just to cover this again, we're putting our elbows in front of his traps, bring your knees up, for having problems getting under their elbows, we can pick it one at a time, putting our arm back, and then pinching our knees up here and setting our heels in against their pelvis so we can come up and they're flared right here. Their elbows are up and they can't really help it. There's nowhere for them to go. This is good. This is going to take minimal buck from them when they're trying to get us off. We can um, ride this very, very easily. What I want to focus on first here is separating his arms. So anyone that is in this position that knows anything is going to be very defensive about their arms. Oftentimes they'll be crossing them, hugging as tight as they're allowed to with this grip with my legs, sometimes even like holding their collars. It's going to be difficult to break through if that's all they're focusing on. So what I'm going to go through is how I like to break through to start. To separate these arms, if I can get an overhook on this one and a wrist grip on that one, great. I'm going to start there and I'm going to punch this one to the ground and then turn so that my hip is behind the elbow on this one that's overhooked. This is gonna set up a lot of play from here in this high technical mount. Great position to hold. If I'm here and I can't get this overhook and I can't find his wrist, he's just being hyper defensive, I'm gonna start harassing his throat right away because he's so defensive of these arms. I can come in just with a knife hand here and cut down and start forearm choking like this where he's going to have to Exactly, loosen up one of these things because he's going to get choked for no good reason. It's a very simple choke for him to fight, so he's going to release one. That's when we overhook, and then we can start punching and twisting. Okay, once we've got to this position, and you'll love getting to this position. This is a great position to attack from. We're still going to make sure that this foot over here is pulling in on his body, and this one here is, is very tight to his uh, deltoid and tricep area, and we're at this overhook. Here, we're nice and based. And he's basically got to make a choice right now. He's halfway to an arm bar, and I'm halfway to an Americana on this side. So he has to make a choice of which one he's going to defend. A lot of times I find that they like to react to the Americana grip over the arm bar because this is, this is an uncomfortable position for your arm to be in. It feels like you're very close to getting attacked. It's tight on the shoulder right away, whereas this one, we're further away from an arm bar than we are to an Americana here. So a lot of times they'll reach with this hand and when they do, I'm going to follow them. You see how I followed it up like that? Keeping these hands from connecting. If I let them connect, it's going to be difficult. But as he reaches, I'm going to follow it like this. This shifts my weight onto his ribs, and it makes this foot back here light enough that I can swing over, pinching my knees together, trapping that arm, and hitting our arm. Again, we're here. We've managed to make our breakthrough right here, where we've got him in this mounted dilemma. Maybe he's more concerned about the arm bar this time. He's seen this play, he knows that the Americana takes a few more steps to get hooked up, so he's going to take that risk. He's grabbing his, maybe his collar right here. This one isn't very available at the moment. I'm going to take my overhook out and switch it to the wrist grab right here. Now I'm going to rock forward, taking my hand flat on the mat like a piece of paper, sliding under and making a connection here. Now I want to pull back just a little bit and then rock up like I'm painting the floor with his wrist, like that. So those are our two options from that mounted, uh, technical mount, I call it a dilemma, a mounted dilemma position. So other options from here. This, these are some that I've been playing with lately that I've had lots of good success from. We're getting to that same position where we're pinched right here. I punch one down to the ground and staple it like this. So now this hand is completely out of the equation. He's never going to get this back when I've got this much weight on my knee. The only place for it to go is down, which is even worse. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to separate this hand 
And the one that I've been liking lately is you pinch this against your shoulder here, and then just push this in this direction, and you hit an Americana very, very tight. You don't need it on the floor, and it doesn't even have to go much further than 90 degrees to his body before it locks up, just because of the way this, this lever is positioned behind him. Another option too is if this one does manage to get behind me for whatever reason, I can do the same thing in the opposite direction with the Kimura, where I can grab the elbow here and just push his hand down towards the ground. And that will hit the Kimura in that position. Also, we get to this position. Here, I can staple and grab the head here. And if he's especially trying to go low with this hand that I'm stapling, I can swing this around and come like this. Now when I set this in for my mounted triangle, I want my quad as hard and tight against his neck as I possibly can. At this point, I'm going to take this knee and drive it over top of my shin. I'm not going to put this behind my leg for the mounted position because I don't like trapping my foot. Depending on how they buck and roll, I can hurt my ankle. Uh, not a fan of that. I'm going to drive my shin over top of my own ankle tightly and turn the corner like this which gets our tap right there. Just from the pressure, this one is, is not like a typical triangle. You'll feel it when you're in it, and you'll definitely feel it when you put it on. As long as your thigh is nice and tight here, you bring this over and twist this angle, you can just hold there and wait for the tap. Very tight on the carotids. All right, so one that I found surprising amount of success from when it, it was discovered, at least I discovered it by accident, um, comes from that mounted dilemma situation. And there's a lot that can be done there. I'll just uh, show a couple of these rarer or stranger ones, which, although they're weird, and you might question it when you see it, I've hit it a lot. I've hit it a lot on a lot of people that know it's coming. So it's definitely something that's useful if you try it and get good at applying it. So I'm gonna get to my high mount and get my separation, push the hand down like this. Now, when you go for the Americana here sometimes, you switch right here, they'll change the angle on this arm. So as I come underneath, yeah, he'll come up high like this. So this is not a good position to get this Americana from. It keeps him in at least a safe zone for the time that I have to make an adjustment. So what I did instead, or what I've been doing instead, is I'll maintain this wrist grab here. I'll take this one out and either grab the wrist or underhook this uh, arm bar side again. And I'm going to hook the tricep, especially if I'm under hook here, I'm gonna hook the tricep, pull this way, set my shin in, and pull his own arm behind his head right here. So if you take a second to dissect this position, I don't have my leg over his head like I typically would with an arm bar, but he can't turn towards me because of this arm that's being pulled here. It pulls really hard for him, basically pinning this shoulder on the ground this way and he'd have to roll in against the strain on his own shoulder. So this is really uncomfortable just as a position. I can still pinch my knees here and get a very easy arm bar like this. And uh, I've been told by a younger student of mine, because I'm just not enough with the times apparently, that this is called a grandma dab. So I have colloquially called this one the gram dab. If you can hit a gram dab, you're winning that match for sure. Here, here, we switch to the Americana, but it changes position on us. So I come underneath, grab that tricep, you put the shin against the neck, and come here. And this one, if I'll try to move around in it, I can follow it very easily. I have very good control here. Just keeping tension on that arm, and obviously just straining this thing until it gets to that tapping position. One last, Addendum to the addendum on that one is when we get to the gram dab position. Here, here, here. Sometimes this one here is it's bent and it's hard to, to get rid of. Okay, this one is, is kind of in a broken position for me. So what I've done with this one is if I take heavy pressure on this leg to maintain the position for the time it takes me to switch this hand. I'm going to switch it to here, like this, coming to my own wrist, pulling. It's going to twist his wrist and turn that angle. At this point, I'm going to turn 45 degrees and lean back. Or twisted wrist locks, I like to call the twisted wrister. So here, actually, just turn a little bit here. Here, there. 
switch. Here, yeah, and that thing's stuck. I'm going to keep heavy pinch on this. Come to the top, the meat of the hand right here with four fingers. Figure for it. Twist, break. I'm going to turn 45 degrees, that's important. And then just lean my weight back on this wrist to break it. So there you have at least a half a dozen good options from that high mount, knees pinched, stirrup position. I like to play this one a lot, guys. I play this one constantly, like I said, my path ends up there from almost every direction. So I've I've proofed this one on many people of different strengths, of different sizes, of different belt levels, and it's worked to one degree or another between all these options uh, on everybody. At least, you know, you've got good options from there. It's a very, very valuable position that if you practice it and you drill it, and you maybe you might find more moves than I've found. I'm sure there's more there. There's back takes for sure. Um, I'm just playing with a couple other ones. I'm keeping on the wraps so I figure them out, but uh, good stuff. So. Let me know if you've played around with it, if you found something else, that'd be cool to know. If you've got any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. And thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.